Welcome everybody to Next Up Live. I'm Benita Fitzgerald Mosley and I'll be your host today. The interview series from League Apps features inspiring stories from people, news, and happenings around the industry. And today, I'm really excited to talk with one of my former colleagues at Laureus Sport for Good Foundation, um, Farlone Toussaint. She is the Director of External Affairs for the Center for Healing and Justice Through Sport. Great to see you again, Farlone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's always such a pleasure to be in your presence, Benita. Likewise. Um, yeah, we, uh, I helped and participated in a, a really inspiring launch week for the Center for Healing and Justice Through Sport a few weeks ago. And I, I'm curious to know, what is the most memorable moment for you and how's it been going uh, since the launch a few weeks ago? Yes, um, we first of all want to thank you and Lee Gaps for being a part of launch week. It was such a major affair to put together, especially during a pandemic. Um, so we're just so grateful for your presence there. Um, thank you again. Oh, um, pleasure. It was it was it was definitely a feat to to have a launch week, right? To to have uh, events going on daily for five whole days. Um, but we wanted to make sure that uh, different audiences heard about us and heard about what we were getting ready to do. Um, as you know, the Center for Healing and Justice Through Sport um, isn't a new concept. Um, we just changed our name. Uh, formerly We Coach, um, our mission is to um, make sport healing for youth everywhere, all youth everywhere. Um, and so we were just um, making sure that everybody knew that we're back and better. Um, my favorite part of launch week has to be uh, interviewing Muggsy Bogues. That oh, was wow. so cool, so much fun, so nostalgic. Um, but also he was just a really great ambassador for the junior NBA and coaches everywhere. He just really understood. And not in a way that was like very superficial, but like you could truly and deeply tell that he shared the values of creating healing centered environments for athletes and understood that you're not foregoing performance by doing um, sport differently. So um, yeah, super, super cool. I cannot wait to keep in touch with him. I mean, that's really the ideal mix, right? Is to, to do sport right, um, but, but do it in a way that's, that's healing for, for kids and uh, encompasses and includes as many kids as possible. And, and that's what I love about about your mission, the mission of We Coach, and now the, the center. Um, you know, I think this uh, sentiment is, 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 is going international. The IOC, the International Olympic Committee, added the word together to their Olympic motto. So now it's swifter, higher, stronger, together. And through uh, the pandemic, we've seen the youth sports industry come together and then embody that word in ways that we all never even imagined. And one example, of course, is a collaborative op-ed that a few national sports uh, organizations, youth sports organizations did and, and published together, calling for the industry to unite so they can enact change, uh, the change that our industry needs. And that includes uh, the Center for Healing and Justice Through Sport, the Play Sports Coalition, uh, the Aspen Institute's Project Play, Laureus Sport for Good Foundation, Play Equity Fund. Um, and, you know, that's an illustrious group of organizations. And I'm wondering, you know, what did this op-ed represent to you? Yeah, no, I mean, first of all, how cool is it that behemoth organizations like these um, can put ego aside and choose to um, just tell everyone about how important it is to unify? Um, because I know the work that's happening across the country by these organizations. Um, and I think it's easy to do things um, alone, right? Because yeah. you don't have to deal with the human stuff and, and making sure that everyone feels comfortable and everybody is moving at the same pace. But I think, you know, what's the saying about you can go fast alone? But alone and farther together, yes. Right? You know, I, I really do believe that we're at a place now where we probably do need to consider um, that option because yeah. going fast has gotten us nowhere for a long time. Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm really proud to be amongst this group. I think that 
um, what they have shown me is that um, people are really wet, ready and willing to do what it takes to rally the entire youth sports sector to do something different because um, the youth in our communities deserve better, our families deserve better, and we're ready to fight for what's better together. And so I think it's a really great example to the rest, you know, as a person who was responsible for a collective impact initiative in Atlanta for several years, I understood that it was hard to do collective impact on a local level because people were like, well, the other folks aren't playing nice with each other. Why should we, right? Uh, they're working in isolation. Why should I, right? And I think this is a really great testament to saying like, we need to walk the talk. We can't ask folks, who are you collaborating with in applications, but we're not collaborating with folks at our level. So um, yeah, I'm just so proud. Yeah. And what do you think industry leaders can, can really take away from that, particularly other organizations that may not have been involved in this particular project with the op-ed, but, but we might wanna collaborate with them uh, more extensively in the future? Yeah, I want people to know that it wasn't easy to get all of these organizations on one piece of paper, right? I want people to know that even as simple as that may seem or look, it just wasn't as simple as folks think. And I think that that's okay. I think folks need to know that it's, um, we shouldn't be attracted to what's simple. We should be attracted to what's right and making sure that um, you are um, being realistic and um, being um, hopeful that even though it's not the easiest thing to do, even though it's not the simplest thing to do, it's worth doing because we, um, have a long way to go in making sure people hear our cries in the youth sports sector, right? People are not hearing us um, through the clutter and we have to be one band, one sound. And so I hope that it inspires folks to get together on their own neighborhood, in their own community, in their own region to really start to scream the cries of what's going on in this op-ed. Um, so we can really get some attention and uh, shine a light on the benefits of youth sport. Yeah, I mean, it, this is not a zero sum game. Um, the, uh, you know, us being together is a much, much louder voice than any one of us can be by ourselves. And if we can set the stage for, for leaders and policymakers and funders, uh, that that youth sport is a healing mechanism. It's a it's an opportunity for kids to come together, for adults to come together uh, through uh, through sport and 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 create some impact uh, for kids and for families and communities. I think w if we can beat that drum louder and louder, it really lifts everybody. Everybody benefits from that. Um, so I know the center just uh, introduced a, a new collaboration of your own. It's a joint program with Laureus USA, uh, the COVID relief training program. And so, um, you know, you're, you're providing some, some training and some data collection tools at, at no cost to those who participate. And so would love to hear more about that partnership and, and some of the goals that you have for it. Absolutely. Um, shout out to Alma Mater, right? Um, Laureus USA, we keep it in the family here. Um, I would say, you know, first of all, um, it's at no cost because Laureus um, provided all of the funds to ensure that uh, particularly the organizations who need this support the most, mm -hmm. who are, you know, dealing with the most vulnerable communities, um, having the hardest time in terms of raising funds, for professional development or keeping their coaches um, current in the latest information on um, supporting youth um, who are dealing with traumatic things that we can't even imagine. Um, you know, we're really proud to be working with Laureus on this because we are being super intentional about addressing the gaps that these types of organizations may have in getting these kinds of resources. Very similar to what we saw happen during the pandemic in terms of PPP and, you know, most of the time it's organizations who have the 
infrastructure, the bandwidth, the capacity that get the resources first, right? Really? And there's no judgment towards that, but we need to make sure that we're being an intentional about getting to those folks who need this the most. Um, and we understand that they're in the trenches, they're on the ground doing the hardest work. Um, and they're the ones who need to know about um, SVYD 101 or Healing Centered Sport 1 and 1 and understanding how there are easy tools that you can simply integrate into your current programming to make sure that young people are getting the little dosages of, of healing and trust that they need to become stronger and better every day. I know that um, this particular time in everyone's lives, um, the, the dark cloud of this pandemic, um, we're just kind of getting used to it, right? Like we're just yeah. accepting every day that we don't know what's going on and trying to live through that. And that's prolonged trauma. And I do think that whether you're a coach or a teacher or a caregiver, this is something that I really want people to know is accessible to them and is going to be truly beneficial in their own healing, as well as the healing that they're gonna be able to provide to the young people that count on them to show up. Yeah, I think sometimes people think it's a magic wand of some kind, and it's really just doing the work day by day, implementing the right tools. And it's so great that you and Lorius are, are providing those, those tools at no cost to deserving organizations. Um, we close every episode by asking the question, what's next, what's next up? And so I uh, would love to know what's next up for the Center for Healing and Justice through sport through the rest of the year and, and take us into 2022. Oh my gosh, Benita, I'm so excited to share this. I am so grateful y'all are giving us the opportunity to share. We have some really big news coming through uh, about our partnership with Nike. Wow. Um, some really awesome opportunities coming up very, very soon. I can't release too, too much, but I will say that um, in the next coming months, if you show up at a Nike store, you are more than likely to see CHJS. And I hope that if you are getting Christmas gifts or you are getting, um, you know, just your regular uh, needs for your own uh, sport and physical activity, um, that you consider supporting CHJS as you get your Nike goods. So That's I'm excited cool. about that partnership. It's going to last till the end of the year and we are super thrilled um, to continue to work with them. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. So look for it in the stores, definitely. Um, you guys are doing great work. You always have. So happy to continue to be able to collaborate with you uh, through um, Lee apps, uh, through the the Play Sports Coalition and, and really support your efforts at the center uh, as much as possible. So thanks for alone for joining us. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you.